Hey folks, it's Rick Guy here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are just finishing up the last of the grass planting down through here. There's not a lot of it left. There's a little bit. Plus, we've also got the plowing to finish off up here. There's not a lot of it left, just a little bit. And then once we've done these two different tasks... Hang on, I need to allow create fields and finish that little bit there right once we've done these two bits we'll finish planting this bit up here we do want to throw a quick whip of fertilizer across this piece up here uh, well across all of this piece um, and I think that's about it don't think there's gonna be a lot else that we're gonna need to do I said to you on Monday's episode about uh, possibly using the new mod that has come out that allows you to well, a new mod that's come out. It's a mod that I've seen on Nexus mods um, uh, that allows you to feed all the animals automatically. So all of the animals will be automatically fed. Uh, a lot of you seem to be fairly indifferent about it, uh, much the same as I'm really, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent about that. Maybe it would help speed things along a little bit. Um, one or two people seem to think it was a pretty good idea, speed things along a bit, because um, it does seem to be, those of you who are the bigger arable fans, um, more of you seem to be very much against it than are very much for it, and then it's kind of uh, middle of the line for the rest of you. So, at the moment, I'm going to leave it off because it's a bit much for quite a few of you, it seems. Um, maybe, just maybe, if we really want it to, you know, in order to be able to do something a bit later on, we could take a look at it. But at the moment, I will, uh, I'll leave that one out. Uh, I'll, I'll go for something else instead. Um, well, we'll, we'll carry on doing what we're doing and, uh, doing things a little bit more properly and uh, at least semi-sensibly. Did he drive into those? He did. He drove into the bales, look. I didn't think that they did that. Well, he missed them there. It definitely looks like... Definitely looks like he drove into the bales. Although, now I'm not so sure. Because... Let me just fold that one up a minute. I don't know if he drove into the bales or if these couple of bales... He did. He did drive into the bales. He caught the end of the stack and he nudged him forwards. That's what he did when he was over the other side. So it has driven into my bales. Cheeky little toe rag. Cheeky little something. This is unacceptable behaviour. I expect better from my employees. There will be repercussions to this. There will be repercussions. None at the moment, because uh, you know, I, I can't be bothered, but um, there, there, there will be. There, there will be, I can assure you. Let's just take a quick... Actually, I want to... If I just go that way, it's a, lot, it's a lot easier. Let's just take a quick trip over to him, and we'll stop the hired help from messing around here a minute. And we need to tidy up this bit, and then we need to go and do the bit of grass planting up at the top. And that is everything then planted with grass. Right, we've got all of this field then planted with grass. No more cereals on this field. This is all going to be producing grass. We do need to put in a replacement track if we can. I think that would be a good idea. Uh, we'll put one going... Well, I was thinking to go up the side of the chickens there. Now, somebody has told me that if we use the Place Anywhere mod um, and then do the landscaping on it. You can landscape around the trees with the place anywhere. It overwrites that little bit. Uh, so what you do is you do that, and then you lower down the bit, like we've got our lumps of granite here and there, um, lower it down using the place anywhere, and then that will expose the little bit of tree stump that's left, and you can get rid of it, and it's problem solved. So I was considering doing that, However, at the moment, I'm not going to because I quite like having this element of the big lumps of granite that have been left that, that are there in the ground. Because this does happen in real life. You do get these, like, big lumps of stone. I mean, it's not necessarily granite. Um, 
big lumps of stone that turn up on your farm, and they are an absolute jolly nuisance. They are a pain. They are a royal pain in the rear. They absolutely, uh, they, they absolutely are. They, they are a, a, a real nuisance, but there's nothing you can do about them. You can try blasting them out or digging them out some other way, but really all you're doing is you're digging down over the top of a huge great big boulder and then covering it over with a bit of earth. So it may not necessarily work. You may not have very much success with doing that. And all you end up sort of doing is, um, you know, covering it over a bit so you can get a bit of crop growing there. Um, every time you have a bit of dry weather, anything that's above that great big boulder will die anyway because there's no water for that particular bit. It's all sat on top of a giant piece of stone. Um, so it's it's quite realistic having this massive great big boulder that's stuck up in the way and causing a few issues. And for that reason, I quite like it. And I, I'd kind of like to leave it there. So for the moment, we're going to leave it there. And also, if you're trying to build a farm track and you've got a massive great big boulder, well, you've got to build your farm track around the boulder. You can't just go straight through it because it's not worth you spending three days trying to remove one boulder just to put a farm track through. You put the farm track through just a little bit to the side and save yourself three days' work. That's how, that's, that's how it works. That's, that's how these things operate. So that's what we'll do, is we'll put our farm track just off to the side. Now, we've got $183,000 at the moment, and we are wanting next to buy a bit more land. As soon as we've got more land, we've got um, more chickens that we're going to want to buy. Now, if we get this finished, we, 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 we are getting this finished today. We're getting this finished. We're going to get some fertilizer put on it. We can then start fast-forwarding time a little bit, and at least to the first growth stage where we need to put another layer of fertilizer across everything. And then once that's done, then we're sort of in a position where we can start thinking about what we're going to do um well uh, we we can fast forward time by quite a long way um we, we've uh, so we'll be able to generate a whole load of eggs we'll be able to generate a load of wool down there at the sheep we'll be able to generate some new sheep and the chickens are now actually all full um petro grace mark has done some extensive testing with the chickens to see if the rooster makes any difference whatsoever to gameplay in any way, shape, or form, and apparently it does not. It makes no difference having the rooster in there, so our rooster that we've got down there, uh, Chanticleer, Chanticleer, his days are numbered. Unfortunately, for he doesn't know it yet, um, so don't don't go and tell him, because it, it, it's going to be a bit devastating for him to find out that he's very soon going to end up in a pie. Um, and all of the other chickens, we're going to move them to a bigger pen, and, and then they will be very happy. And then um, they will reproduce through the magic of reproduction with no rooster, and we shall have a whole new pen full of chickens. If we got the money, we'll just buy 400 chickens. The only problem I've got with buying 400 chickens is that still, still the one thing that we've been asking for for this game for many, many years now is a way to buy multiple animals easily. And we still don't have it. We still do not have the ability to buy 400 chickens with a single click. You can't just go and say buy 400 or buy 200. You've got to buy each one individually, one button at a time. And I cannot for the life of me understand why we still have this. Why do we still have it? In, why do we still have that particular function? I thought that we—I I thought that we genuinely taken a decent step in the right direction in FS17, where you scrolled the button. You, you scrolled your middle mouse button, and yes, um, I did actually completely wear out and ruin uh, a mouse doing it because I bought so many animals. Um, and I'd, I'd never worn out a mit. You know, normally when a mouse wears out, you wear out, you know, the, 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 it doesn't point so well and things like that. It was the scroll button that wore out, right? I actually physically wore out a scroll button on my mouse. Um, that's fine. I can cope with that. I, I can cope with wearing out a mouse button, um, a, a, a middle scroll button. But then going back to the one... 
probably the biggest complaint that I remember seeing on any of the forums all over about FS15 was being forced to buy every single animal individually, one at a time, and you've got to click two or three times in order to buy each one. That was probably the single biggest complaint about feature of FS15. And they went and put it back in again. I just don't understand. I don't... I... I... I I'm... I, I just cannot understand why you would take the one feature that is complained about more than any other and then stuff it back into the game. Uh, so, so, somebody may be able to shed some light on this. Uh, there may be an underlying reason with the coding that, unfortunately, that was pretty much what, you know, their hand was kind of forced with it. You know, fair enough, if, if, if that's what it was. But, um, my goodness me, it's, it's, it's frustrating. I want to buy, like, uh, ideally, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have 25 chicken coops with 400 chickens in each, right? 20 for, do, 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 you, do you understand what I'm telling you here? I'm, I, th this is what I want to buy. Now, you've got to press enter. Uh, I think you press it, no, you, you press it, you press enter for each chicken that you want, don't you? Um, and then, you know, I can't remember. I tell you what, we'll go and have a look. And I need to buy some animals. Well, I don't need to buy any animals just yet. But I, I will be buying animals very, very soon. So let's just finish this. So we've got our grass planted now. We've now got a nice big grass field. There we go. We're the proud owners of a large grass field. This one right here. Nice big grass field. Perfect. Job done. There. Queue up. Fold you up. Run down here so that you're ready to be washed. And before I do the washing, I will just have a look. You know what? I think we'll buy a sheep. I think we will buy one sheep so that we can we can just sort of take a look at it on there. Right. Easy, tiger. There you go. Right. And now I will nut my head on the plow. That is not the way to behave. Frith, you will do yourself some permanent damage. I am... I am jumping, like, really, like, elegantly there. Look at, look, look at me go. I'm, like, floating. <laughs> um... There, right. So, if I want to buy a sheep, I have to... We're buying black and white sheeps. Black and white sheeps. I buy it there. Move. Right, so it's, it's one button press and then an, an overall confirm. Okay? So, I've, I've still got to press the button for every time that I do it. And so we're looking at, if I've got to do that, if I've got to press the button for every chicken, I want 25, probably we won't get to 25 times 400, but just say, for example, 10 times 400, that's 4,000 chickens. So that would make 8,000 chickens. The five, that would take us up another five, uh, another, sorry, 2,000. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking to buy 10,000 chickens. Okay, that's 10,000 times I've got to press the button on my keyboard. These things are normally only good for 10,000 presses anyway. So you're saying that if I want 10,000 chickens on my map, I have to sacrifice a keyboard for it. This is essentially what you've done, giants. You said if we want large-scale farming, we have to give up our keyboard in order to be able to get there. And this is the bit that I don't like. This is the bit that doesn't sit well with me in this particular instance. In, is that we already knew that this was hugely, hugely unpopular. How do we know this? Because of s how many people complained about it. And it's back in the game. And I, I just don't understand. Why is it back in the game? Please, somebody explain to me why it's back in the game. I, I just don't get it. Um, the rest of this, get like, that is probably my single biggest complaint about this game. And I know that there's, like, huge... I don't like to spend too much time complaining about this game. Mainly because I haven't actually got anything to complain about. I'm loving this game. I really am. The, the, the changes, the improvements, everything is absolutely wonderful. I'm not wild about having the ground response mod built into the game. I don't like that, um... Mainly because of the uh, time lapse series, it, it makes them bounce around too much, and I would rather have an option to switch that off. But that's, I'd consider that to be a relatively minor thing, and it's it's work, you know, it's the sort of thing that you can work around, um, or put up with that sort of thing. Um, 
Whereas this whole thing with the animals, if you want to go large scale animal production, you're giving up. You, you, you are literally, you, you're sacrificing your keyboard in order to be able to make it work. And that's the bit that I don't understand. Is why was that put back into the game in that way? Why wasn't a slider put in? Because a slider would also work if you go to the interface. You can have a cursor come up and make that work also for people on console. So you wouldn't need to have it different for people on console. So they would also be able to buy their 10,000 chickens if they wanted to. I mean, yeah, you're limited to 10 animal pens unless you've got a mod, which I don't think that mod is available on consoles. So at the moment... Um, you're limited to 10, so there's 4,000 chickens, but still, there's 4,000 times you've got to press a button on your, um, on your console as well. So I do understand that, you know, you've got to make the game compatible with console at the same time, but you can still use sliders. You can still have a slider that comes up, and then you just pr use the D-pad to move the slider across. And then we can use a mouse, and we can slide it all the way up to the other end, 400 chickens, click, bang, and then slam down on the space bar... Job done. 400 chickens in a pen, and we've, you know, for a couple of clicks. That, that's all it would be. I know this works, because it happens in, um... Oh, what is it? Uh, Skyrim! It happens in Skyrim. Skyrim is console and PC all together. It's the same game. Console or PC, it doesn't matter. Same game, same control, same everything. It's all the same, and you can do it on there. So I know that it's possible, I know that it's possible, but this is my big, that, that is probably my only real genuine complaint that I've found with FS19. Like, the, now I know that I've got a few other little bits that uh, do niggle at me every now and then, but um, overall, I'm genuinely, genuinely enjoying this game. I'm absolutely loving it, and all, yeah, any... Most of the other frustrations that have been around have sort of quickly been ironed out because it was, it was mainly down to bugs and stuff and, and slight miscalculations and things like that. And it's, it's, it's been dealt with. That's absolutely wonderful. It's what I love about Giants is that there is genuine serious complaints. They deal with them really fast, except for this whole thing with the clicky bit with the animals. Right, they didn't do it in FS15. They did kind of address it by having it on a scroll button in FS17, which at least was a step in the right direction. I mean, we would like to have seen a slider bar come up so that we could just move a slider bar along, right? And it, every, that's what everybody wanted. Everybody wanted a slider bar. And I thought, I just hoped, I dreamed that giants would do that. They would put in a slider bar. You, you go to the animal pen, and you can press a button to add an animal, one at a time, a couple at a time. We have a slider bar. Or an add 20, add 100. A couple of, you know, a couple of extra buttons. And it would have all been, it, it would have been wonderful. It would have been perfect. And it would have been like, the, the, you know, a relationship made in heaven. It would, have, it would have been poetry in motion, truly, truly beautiful and wonderful. But it didn't happen. And I was left broken-hearted. Absolutely, totally devastated and broken-hearted, and I didn't like it. Right, so moving on from that, um, we've got this Friday a live stream coming up that is on the new large four times map, the Western Australia map. Now, I've seen a couple of people taking a little bit of a look at this. If you would like to see a little bit more about it, head over to Duck Zorley's channel. And he's recently started Let's Play on it. He's using Stevie's mods on it because single player on that map on normal speed machines is going to be a tad slow. So he's using um, Stevie's mods on there and, and using the faster options and stuff uh, and bigger grain capacity and stuff like that. And... Quite frankly, this map looks fantastic, right? This it, It's a four times map, and this is I think this is the first four times map that's been released. It looks absolutely incredible. It really does. Western Australia is called. Um, so I will be live streaming on it on Friday evening, where I will be answering the ultimate question. Do four times maps still have the issue with making hay? Because we know in FS17... 
there were some serious issues with the four times maps where you couldn't make hay properly. You had to be going from south to north um, while you were turning in order for the hay to make. If you're going in a different direction, it didn't work. It didn't pick it up properly because of some underlying bug with the map. And nobody was ever quite able to figure out what that bug was. Even guys from Giants looked at it and nobody was ever quite able to figure out what it was and how to fix it. Is it still there? This is the big question. Does that bug still exist or are we now able to make hay properly on a four times map? So this is one of the big questions that I will be answering when I have a look at the four times Australia map. Western Australia. I'm really looking forward to doing the live stream this week. Um, one, because I'm really actually starting to really, really enjoy doing live streams. It's a lot of fun. It really is. I'm, I'm having, a, I'm having a, a load of fun with everybody coming along and joining in. And it's... Um, I, I'm not, like, genuinely terrified like I was to start with. Uh, so, so it's no longer, like, really scary uh, experience for me anymore. It's, it's lots and lots of fun and entertainment, which is absolutely great. That's what it should be. Um, but also... I'm really particularly looking forward to it this week because of the um, this map. I'm really, really keen to get onto this four times map and start taking a good look around it. Because one, it's you know the first decent four times map that has come out, and I know there's a lot of people been waiting for a four times map. A lot of you love your four times maps, and this is essentially all you know. Once you get a decent four times map, you you. Uh, some of you will not go back to a regular size map. Some of you, you do all of your stuff on four times or bigger maps. And um, this one does look really good. It's it's done in the style of Western Australia. It's from, I've been told from some Australians. Doug Zorley is Australian. And um, there's a few other Australians that I've gotten to know as well. Head over to our Discord server and you can meet some of them. Um, they, they do hang around there. They say strange things, though. Um, the, these Australian folks, that they do say some very strange things. Like, you say good morning to them, and they say good evening. And, and uh, other bizarre things like that. But, I mean, if, if you can ignore the, um, the, the, the strange goings-on and the strange sayings that they have where they get evenings and, and mornings all muddled up. And, and then you go on there and in the evening, and, and they're busy... You know, I, I go on there on a Tuesday evening and they're busy saying, good morning, it's a wonderful Wednesday. And quite frankly, I think these, these, these poor Australian blokes, they're a little bit confused. Um, but they're a, they're a good sort. They are a good sort overall, even if they do appear to be generally fairly confused about everything. Um, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, I'm not being, like, genuinely nasty and, and insulting. Um, it's, uh, we're... we're we have we have a lot of fun over on our Discord server, um, and yeah, it's it's very enjoyable. But um, I've been assured by our Australian brethren on the Discord server that this Western Australia map is actually very very uh, well done. It's um, very realistic. The fields, um, the the landscape, everything. It's it's very realistically done. It looks absolutely fantastic. And it's a genuine treat to use it. Like I said, Duck Zorley has started doing a Let's Play series on it. He's recently done episode 2. Um, and I happened to have episode 2 playing while I was doing a little bit of work this morning. Um, before I started my recording. And he even mentioned me in one of his videos. So I'm now famous. I've been mentioned in a video. Somebody gave me a shout out in a video. So I am now officially famous. Which is absolutely awesome. Um, so yeah, go over and, and see his video. If I do remember, I'll stick a link in the description down below. If I don't remember, then I won't. Um, and you'll have to go and uh, search up Duck Zorley. And also, just for the record, I think that the, you know, the, the opening um, animation sequence, I've got just Frithgar, it sort of comes up um, and then disappears away again. It's, it's one that I've had for absolutely ages. I, I quite like it. It's, it's fairly minimalist. Um, and... Um, so very occasionally I'll see another one that I really like. And I really like Duck Zorley's. Duck Zorley's one is actually really cool. 
um, the, the way that it works. Again, it's quite minimalistic, and I always like that type of approach. I don't like ones that are um, too over the top, and I don't like them that are too long either. If, if you, you know, a, a, an intro sequence that takes like 15 to 20 seconds to play through, but the time you've gone through that, you know, once is good. But if you're a regular viewer to a channel and you've got to wait 15 to 20 seconds every time for the intro, you start to get fed up with it. Um, so I always like to see the shorter ones. And, and I think Duckies is really good. Um, and I, I was impressed with that one the first time I seen it. And I still like it. It's, it's short as well. And, and the minimalist approach is it's just generally quite cool. Um, so, yeah. Go and check out his Let's Play. Definitely uh, go and check out Stevie's mods if you haven't checked those out. Because, uh, quite frankly, if you are seriously considering doing something on the Western Australia map, uh, Stevie's mods might be what you want. They, they, they may be just what you need. You know what? We should be fast-forwarding time already. There we go. 120 time speed. And we will wander over here. Let's First of all, let's check our animals. So, we are absolutely fine here for food. Absolutely fine here for food. We've got two sheep here. We've got probably two days at least for the sheep. We could do with putting a bit of food in for them, so we'll do that in a minute. Um, the food here, they are... There's Chanticleer, our rooster. His days are numbered. He's going in a pie very soon. And then we've got these guys over here. So, we're going to put some straw and some hay in for the sheep and the horses while we're doing our fast forwarding time and to do that we are going to well actually i'm going to take this one and i'm going to use that one bale right there and we dump that one straight in for the sheep over here we've got one pallet there in for 100 chickens oops steady don't smash the back of this thing it should be noted, though, that just about anywhere I've ever... Well, I've only ever worked one place where they've had skid steers. But everywhere I've been that I've seen that have had skid steers, um, every single skid steer I've ever seen that is more than a week old has got scratches along the back. Um, you're not going to get dents. You're not going to get dents. Because that... Oops, steering wheel's off. Uh, that bit there... That there is just a grill, Right? But that, actually, that's probably a reinforced grill. I would be surprised if it wasn't. Uh, but that right there, that's the counterweight. That's, that's the counterweight, and that's the counterweight over there. And it's probably also around the bottom there. That's solid. That is one huge, massive, solid chunk of iron. and Or probably steel, actually. Um, so you're not going to get dents in it, but you do get scratches on the paintwork where it's gone in and um, sideswiped a, a concrete block or something. Um... You, you always do. It, it doesn't matter where you go. You, th these things always have uh, scratches on the back of them. Um, it's, it's, it's just just the way of things. It's, it's just the way things are. doesn't mean they're bad drivers. Although some people may try to tell you that it does mean they're bad drivers. Um, it just means that they've been driving them. Okay. That grass came up really quickly. Let, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop a minute. Stop a minute. That Seriously, that grass is like grown really fast. It's almost frightening the speed that that grass has come up. Seriously, I did not expect that. How's our other crop doing? This one over here is still looking pretty dead on the ground, really. It's not doing anything at all. Uh, huh. Right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by how fast that's come up. Let's go over here a second and fruit type, growth, uh, no, soil composition, that's the one I want. Right, so it's saying lime. Now, people did tell me that I don't need to worry about lime. I do need to put fertilizer on, though. So we're going to do that a minute. We're going to put fertilizer on the grass because it's already come up that much with the grass. So we go back to you and we'll worry about feeding our animals in a minute. We need to get more fertilizer onto this field. It won't take very long. It did it pretty quick, didn't it? And uh, I go back into you. I got 500 liters. So what we'll do is we'll bring this one over here. We've got to open up that fertilizer spreader, which we will do. I can just press N, even though I don't have the fertilizer spreader actually selected. I can still just press N and it works. 
And this is what I genuinely love about this crane arm, right? Now, I'm using my joystick for this. So I extend that one all the way out. And then I can lower it down like that. I also want to lower the whole shebang down like that. And back it up like this. Now, I can already hook that on, but I don't want to just yet. I want to... Try and get it lined up a little bit better. There, like that. So that I, you know, essentially I'm using that hook. Oops, wrong way. If I could drive. There, right. There we go. Gonna lower that down a little bit. Now that's close enough that you would then get out and you would manually um, lift the hook up over it like that. You'd be able to do that by hand. Right, you would actually be able to do that by hand. Just, just that little bit. Uh, maybe lower the hook down just a tiny fraction more. So then we can just lift that one up like that. All the way up. I'll lower that bag down a little bit and lift the hook up a bit more. And there we go. I love this mod. I really, really, really love this mod. I think it is absolutely fantastic. It really is. So we will lift that one back up. Oops. Let's lower the hook down a bit, and I'll close that one, and then I'll put the hook in. Job done. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. It's genuinely, genuinely brilliant. I, like, I, seriously, I love this mod. One of my favourite mods to come out so far. I've been having a look at some of the course play stuff. Doc Zorley was actually in his Let's Play. I watched, you know, I... I almost never watch Let's Plays, okay? And, and many of you already know that. I hardly ever... Uh, when I say hardly ever, I mean, like, I literally, I'll watch maybe one or two Let's Plays in a week. If that, oftentimes I'll go several weeks without watching a single Let's Play at all. Um, so I really, really don't watch Let's Plays. Uh, I, I just don't have time to watch Let's Plays. Um, but in Ducky's Let's Play that he did this morning... It was actually going over... I don't want to lower it down. It was actually going over some of the... Um, he was using course play. He was setting up course play on one of the fields um, to use his combine with. And it's a lot different now in FS19 than it was in FS17. It seems to be a lot more user-friendly. Um, you've still got the same basic interface, but there's extra bits that have been added in now, uh, which is slightly different. And the whole thing does appear to be more user-friendly than it used to be. Um, and then you can set it up, and it so it traces around the outside of the field. Now, I'm sure it did, do, I think it used to do that. Somebody told me it did used to do that. I didn't know how to use it, that bit, so where it would do around the outside edge of a field, and you could get it to do two headlands. So you can get your combine to go, like, twice around the outside of the field. And so I was watching him do that this morning, and I thought, that's really cool. I, there's something that I'd like to try and do. Um, so I might actually be using course play sometime soon. Um, because the one mod that I do miss, and the one mod that I loved more than any other, was the AI vehicle extension. That was my favourite mod. Because I didn't really use it very much with tractors or anything like that. But what I did use it for was for, um, combining. I used it for combining. You start a field combining because of my habit of going around and plowing the edges of the fields. I don't like square fields um, just plonked in the middle of nowhere. I go out to the edge of what I think the natural edge of the field should be. Uh, but then when you do that, you obviously you don't have the space. Uh, you, 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 can't, you need to guide your combine around the edge. And the AI vehicle extension would do that for you. You'd be, it would send the combine right around the edge of the field and trace the edge of the field. And I thought that was wonderful. But you can do that with course play. So it might be that I no longer need AI vehicle extension. If I can get it set up properly, um, I may even be able to use it in the time lapse series, which would be absolutely wonderful. I'd like to be able to do that. Um, and what do you mean you've com you haven't completed anything? Get back to work. What do you think I'm paying you for? Are you seriously? You can park up in the middle of the field and tell me you're done? I don't think so, Sunshine. Not on my watch. No. Now, if you want to keep your job, Buttercup, you better buckle up and knuckle down. Do you hear me? Right. 
I think I've used enough cliches in one rant. Where was I? Before I started having to discipline our rather undisciplined hired helper right here. I'm, 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 frankly, I'm disgusted at that behaviour. Is he stopping in the middle of the field? Eat your dinner as you go. If you want some dinner, you eat it as you go round, right? You pop, pop open your box of sandwiches and you eat your dinner. If you were daft enough to turn up to work without bringing your dinner with you, that's not my problem. You can go and have some food at 10 o'clock in the evening when you finish work like the rest of us would. If we were daft enough to forget our lunchbox. I mean, what I... Seriously, have you got... You must have like a toilet brush for a brain or something. Goodness me. It's, it's unacceptable behaviour as, as far as I'm concerned. You run your final warning, Sunshine. Next time I see you parked up in the middle of the field, something serious better have happened. Right? I'm telling you that for nothing. Something serious better have happened. Or... Now what are you doing? You, you finish down here. You don't need to go backwards. Just... You know what? You... You, you go home. You're obviously not suited for employment around here. Um, I will take over. I will finish this job. You go on home. You have yourself some tea because you, you're obviously struggling. It's, it's quarter past four and you, you seem to think that it's tea time. Uh, so you, you go on home and you have your tea and uh, then you can take the day off tomorrow as well. All right. Yeah. How's that? Um, I, I, yeah. We, we were just leave it at that. All right. You go home. Have your tea. Take a day off tomorrow as well, and everything will be fine. Right. So, now we've got to find ourselves a new employee. Uh, someone who knows how to pack a lunch, and knows how to, you know, at least last until tea time before they start complaining that they're hungry. Um, wait, what, what was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah, the cosplay stuff. It's, it's actually looking really cool. Right, it's, it does actually look really good. Um, we you just sort of set it, and it does a couple of rounds around the outside. Most importantly, though, it looked like it was relatively simple and straightforward. So much so that I think even I will be able to cope with setting up a course on it, which should be pretty good because all you do is like you press a few buttons and then you 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 click generate course and it does it for you. Right, I think I can cope with that. That's within the. That's within the bounds of stuff that I can personally do. And, and I know, I know, I'm as shocked as you are that there, there may actually be something out there that even Frithgar can cope with. But, um, yeah, if, if we can do that, maybe I don't need to, I won't need to rely on the AI vehicle extension. Although I would still dearly love to see it come back because it's such an awesome mod. And the other mod that I used to really like was a GPS mod. Now, I know that there is a version of GPS sort of kicking around at the moment, but I'm not sure... Uh, how good it is. I've heard varying reports on it. It's uh, apparently it's a bit buggy and it's not been properly converted yet. Uh, the other thing with uh, GPS is I no longer need it. Right, there are certain things that I would still use it for, for like getting straight edges on fields and stuff like that. But the main reason that I use GPS was for doing... Ah, uh, there we go. That's what I was waiting for. Um, main reason I used GPS was to do the... Um, the, the the jobs for other people but well, you can use standard hired help to do that now so we no longer need to worry about it and so it, it's kind of the main reason that I personally use GPS has now been rendered obsolete I no longer need the GPS in order to do those jobs for other people and that means it should make our lives a whole lot easier right life has suddenly gotten a lot easier because um, our hired help can go and do these jobs for other people. And that is a massive, massive improvement over FS17 as far as I'm concerned. Being able to have the hired help do the jobs for other people. I always felt that that should have been in the game anyway. Right? That It always seemed a little bizarre to me that you couldn't use hired help to go and do a job for another person. I used to work for a contractor for a period of time. And I'm pretty sure that he would go and do a job for another person. But he wouldn't go and do it. I'm, I, I, if I recall correctly, I was the I, I was the one who was sat in the tractor doing the actual job, right? So I know from experience that going and working for doing contract work for someone else whilst hiring a, a, a third person to go and do the actual work is quite realistic. So it, it does make me chuckle a bit when I do that in like the time lapse series and I get comments down below in the comment section on the time lapses saying why are you doing that job yourself that's not real why why are you using hired help to do the contract job that's not realistic 
I'm afraid we're going to have to agree to disagree on that point because I used to actually do that for a living. I used to work for somebody who would take contract jobs and send me out to go and do them. I would get paid an hourly wage. He would get paid for the job. The farmer would get the job done. I think the person who benefited most from it was my employer. He would make a fortune from it. The farmer would um, get the job done at a fairly costly amount of money, I've no doubt. Um, considering who it was that he was hiring to do it, it probably did cost him a fair bit. Um, and then I got paid as little as possible. As little as my employer could get away with was what I got paid for doing it all. And so I know that I, I you know, and I do kind of operate my farm, you know, along the same kind of lines. I pay my employees as little as I can possibly get away with so that I can make more money out of it. Um, and, but I know that I know for a fact that this is completely realistic. OK, I, I know that uh, going out and doing a job for somebody else and taking on hired help to do it is entirely realistic because it's what I actually used to do for a job. That was my job. I went and did just that. So uh, I'm, I'm not really sure where the non-realism bit is coming from. But um, yeah, I know that you could make more money if you went and did it yourself. Um, and perhaps if I was to go and get a mod that allowed me to uh, have like four or five contract jobs going at once. Well, two, because I've only got two tractors on the time-lapse series. Uh, that would possibly be a bit more realistic because you, you've got more people working at once. But um, yeah, anyway, I, I've said my bit about that. Um, we will let this bit... He's just going to finish off doing this fertilizer here. I'll tell you what, while he's doing that, let's go... This way. What are we doing? How are we doing for our chickens at the moment? It's these 100 down here. Two and a half thousand litres of wheat in here. And it's slightly annoying that we can't unload that wheat. I can't take the wheat out of there and do something with it. It is a little, it, it is a little frustrating that we can't do that. Uh, 324 litres of eggs. Which means that, that pallet right there has still got loads of space in it. So those chickens will be fine. And then... Our uh, wool up here, thus heading towards full, isn't it? How are we doing with wool? 2,610. Wait a minute. Does that mean this one's full? That's the reusable pallet. That should be 10,000 litres. It's entirely possible that that one is full. What is the current price for wool? Let's have a look at that. If it's above 2,000, that's what we want. It is above to Sell above 2,000. That's all you need to know. Sell above 2,000 and everything is good. So, if now, this is the thing. I've got mixed pallets on here. I've got reusable pallet there. The eggs, though, those eggs are not uh, mixed pallets. So, eggs. Ooh. 5,000 at the ranch. That's not bad. 5,000 is not bad at all, actually. Let's, let's speed things up a little bit because that tract is almost done. He's only got one more pass across the field. He'll be fine. Um, just let it drift along here. Look, 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 look at this. Look at this money. Look at it going up. The wool's going to go down, though. So as soon as that wool starts to move, we'll, we'll stop. And we'll grab what wool we can. And then we'll come back again. So the egg pallets that I've got on me at the moment are just uh, their single-use egg pallets. So we could go up and we could do those egg pallets first. And sell those up at the ranch, and then we can come back again, and we can um, we we can sort of do that the other way around. Uh, just going, oh, that's helper E has completed their task. Right, let's go and see helper E. Yes, he has completed. Everything is done, so we've now got all the fertilizer and everything that we want on that field. I'll bring you down here. I'm just going to stop you right there a minute and we'll worry about tidying you up later. I'll come back to you and... Right, the eggs have stopped going up in price, so I'm just going to slow that... Oop, no, uh, can't, uh, there. Slow that down a minute. Like that. I can turn... Actually, wait, what was it? It was number five. Number six is the back. Six on the number pad. Front and back. Now, I go to here a second, and I'll take the straps off of the trailer. We do need this so that we can... So we've got pallets already selected. Work mode. 
on there. I got three pallets. So now I'll go up next to this wall. And it takes another one. So we've now got four pallets of wool on there. Ideal. Now that pallet down there with those chickens, if we take a look, uh, that is these down here is 269 litres of eggs. That is nowhere near a full pallet. So we'll leave that one right where it is. Uh, we will keep the auto load running just a second. And we're going to run up next to these chickens up here. And we're going to see if either of those two pallets can be collected. Are they full? No, nope, neither can be collected. So it's not taking full pallets. Um, now, this might be a problem sometimes. But I would guess most of the time, this is not going to be an issue. For me, I think pretty much all of the time, that's not ever going to be an issue. So I'm going to unload them onto the actual trailer like that and put the straps back on. And then we're going to head up the road. We want to go to the ranch and to... Where do we want to go? Uh, yeah, we want to sell that and we want to go to the ranch up the top. I'll turn off the back ones like that a minute. There we go. And we're going to, we'll sell the wool first. We'll have the empty pallets there ready for the wool. And we'll bring this trailer up along here. So this is going to get us a little bit more cash, which is going to go towards the next land that we want to get. Now, these pallets, I think, are... Uh, wait, the reusable ones, they're 8,000 apiece, aren't they? They're not 10,000. It was the uh, single-use ones that are 10,000. Or was it the other way around? I can't remember now. Let's have a look. The reusables are tens. The single uses are eights. Right. So this should be 20,000 litres of wool, which should be $40,000. We should get 40 grand for this. So we'll come up to here. and I'll take those straps off of the trailer and then we will proceed forward. Look at that. Yep, they are. They're completely empty. Just like that. So put those straps back on like that. 41,729 dollars. That's pretty good going, I'd say. 41,000 dollars for two pallets of wool. Quite pleased with that. I'm also quite pleased with the way that our um, shearers were able to really cram that wool in tight into those pallets. It's always good when they can pack the stuff in tight. It takes up less space. The biggest problem with shifting wool is not the weight of the stuff, it's the volume of it. Um, it's like it, it's, a, it's a high volume product. And it is. It's a, it's a real pain having to shift wool sometimes because of the sheer enormous volume that it takes up. Ne never the weight. The weight is not an issue. Right, you can load up quite a large trailer with wool. I want to go up around there. Um, you can load up quite a substantial trailer with wool and tow it with a little old Land Rover or something like that. Um, because it does, it's, it's not particularly heavy. It's, it's not very heavy at all. I've just about run out of time for the episode. I just want to sell these eggs and then we won't skip the night. We'll call it a day after we've sold the eggs. So if you've enjoyed the episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. If I've forgotten to include the link to Ducky's video, then just let me know and I'll um, let me know in the comments and I'll add it in. Um, I do frequently forget, but I once you if you remind me in the comments, then I can quickly go and copy and paste it into the description. It's it's fairly simple, um, and yeah. Also, don't forget to check out our Discord. Ducky's got a Discord as well. I go on there and I annoy him on there. Um, I, I I I changed I changed the rules the other day. It was it was highly amusing. It was really really funny because he he had rules on his Discord. No, um, oh, I tell you what, I want to go like that. He, he had rules on his Discord before I turned up there. No gifts on, the, like, in the main chat. And then I turned up there and, um, like, started having a chat with a couple of people. And, and, and the gifts thing just, 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 just kind of went. I, I destroyed it. It was chaos. It was absolute chaos and madness. And it was fun. It was lots of fun. Uh, there we go. Work mode on... Wait. Yeah, okay, so I want work mode on. Turn work mode off. 
Then I want to go to B for the marker position. Now, the marker position at the moment is out on this side. So, marker, move down, marker, where's the marker move? A J for the marker to move up. There's the marker to move up. Now, uh, marker, move left. Oh, no, marker position, B. That's behind. Press B again, it's out on this side. That's what I'm looking for. And drop it onto that side, like that. There. Right, now I should... I, I, I do want to lift it up a bit, so I don't want to, like, drop it inside that thing. Uh, so, marker, move up is J. There we go, we can drop it like that. Ducky posted a picture on my Discord. Uh, well, I say mine. It's, it's, it's Jimmy J's and Smudos, really. Um, on our Discord. On our Discord. He posted a picture where he'd been using this trailer to stack bales... And, like, seriously, he had them, like, stacked up higher than these trees right beside him. It was very impressive. It looked very cool. Um, now, I've, I've got that in the right place. So do that. Why aren't they selling? I don't understand. Uh, I think I broke it. Let's try that again. Work mode on. I know what we need to do. I know what we need to do. We need to we need to back it up a bit. We need to back it up. Back it up. And we go there, sort of somewhere in the middle like that. Okay, so now Oh, the empty pallets. They don't move, do they? Okay, so now I will try unloading again. Wait a minute, does this mean that I can't go and pick up completely empty pallets? I got full pallets on there. Work mode off. Unload. There, back, side, over here. I lift that one up a bit. Uh, I'm going to move it uh, down, forward, backwards. Move. Uh, press K to move it backwards. There we go. Right, so I'm going to move it back. I'll move it back to there. And then I'll press unload. And they sold. Another 25,884. But, now, this is the big thing. I want to load those two empty pallets, right? Work mode on doesn't do the empty pallets. This is the only issue we've got, is it doesn't do the empty pallets. Now, I really like this. This unless Is there a new auto load? Uh, large square bales, small squares, rounds... Mission pallets, lumbers, egg boxes, cotton modules, pallets. Right, well, it doesn't do it with that. Uh, so if I go through the bales, uh, mission pallets, nope, it doesn't do that. Lumber pallets, nope. Nope. Right, okay. So I can, I can, put, I can put the straps on and I can hold that in place like that. Uh, this is something I will look at ready for next week to see if there's any plans. Uh, I'll see if I can find out. Is there any plans to do it so that we can also have like an additional option for empty pallets or part pallets or something like that? Because um, at the moment it only takes full pallets and that's great. That works really well um, except for the eggs. We're going to kind of want them to do the full pallets. And yeah. Unless I just take the... Well, no. Because uh, even taking the reusable ones is still not going to work. I'm going to want it to... I'm going to want to be able to pick up empty pallets. In order... If I'm going to be able to unload them, I'm going to need to... If I've got to unload them, I'm, I'm going to need to be able to do the empty ones. Uh, we'll have to think... We'll, we'll, we'll think about this. I, I'll worry about that later on. But anyway, if you've enjoyed the episode, uh, I already said all that. So thank you very much for watching. This is Rithgar. Goodbye and see you later.